I recently picked up the limited edition steelbook release of Halloween Ends from Best Buy. Now the horror sequel was probably one of the most divisive films of 2022, and certainly the most divisive in the Halloween franchise. I had some mixed feelings after my first viewing in theaters, but how did it hold up on this viewing? Well, let's find out. Oh, and massive spoilers are ahead, so beware. Halloween Ends is the final film in the David Gordon Green trilogy, coming after Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills. It takes place four years after the events of Halloween Kills and delves into Michael's effect on the surviving characters and the town of Haddonfield itself. Smack in the middle is Corey Cunningham, a character who starts out innocent and good, but slowly descends into darkness as the evil inside him is awakened. Also awakened is the Shape, who has been hiding in the sewers, biding his time, and attempting to gain back his strength. The climax builds to Halloween night when Lori, her daughter, and the town of Haddonfield must face Michael and the ever-changing shape of evil that has infected the town. I had mixed feelings after seeing this one on opening night this past October. I was expecting a much different film than what we got. But even on that first viewing, I didn't view this as a bad movie, just something very different and very, well, strange for the purported final Halloween movie. But watching it again and knowing what to expect this time, I enjoyed it much more. So what did I like? The opening pre credit sequence is expertly handled, with Corey babysitting the rotten kid and the eventual accident. I like how even though Michael is absent from this opening scene, his evil is still felt. And that carries over throughout the entire film. Michael doesn't make an appearance until 40 minutes into the movie, which is just insane, right? But his evil is still felt during that first 40 minutes. It permeates everything, from the characters to the town itself. Their anger and paranoia is there, and I love the missing persons billboard shown throughout. There's some nice social commentary about trauma, fear, and anger that can be viewed through a current real-life lens, but it's never over-the-top or preachy. The character of Corey Cunningham starts out as so likable, and you really feel bad for the guy at first. But as the evil takes hold, you start to fear him. I love the scene where Lori sees him staring at her from the bushes, which harkens back to Michael in the original film. I also liked when the kid's dad tells the story of seeing Corey walking down the street and how when he looked into his eyes, he didn't see Corey anymore. That kind of stuff was interesting to me, and creepy. As for Michael, I liked the idea of him living in the sewer and dragging random people in there and killing them. I really love the whole environment, with the rats and shafts of light. And according to the special features, this was actually a massive set constructed on a soundstage, which is cool. Michael is once again played to perfection by James Jude Courtney, and I love the moldy mask and filthy look he has here. Michael must really stink to high hell in this movie. The film is beautifully directed by David Gordon Green, and say what you want about the guy, but he definitely knows how to frame a shot and direct suspense, that's for sure. I'm actually really looking forward to his upcoming Exorcist movie. Acting is fantastic all around, and Jamie Lee Curtis and Rowan Campbell in particular really give it their all. They are just excellent here. We've got some great death scenes, with the radio DJ being my favorite, and the score by John Carpenter, Cody Carpenter, and Daniel Davies is fantastic. I also love the final showdown between Laurie and The Shape. It was a great battle, violent, yet simple. And look, we all know this isn't going to be the final Halloween movie. There will be more, whether it's another reboot or a remake or whatever. But for this movie, the way they finally killed Michael, I mean, it's a pretty final and solid death for him, dropping him into that giant grinder. So yes, I did enjoy this movie much more on my second viewing. Now it isn't perfect. Having the final film in this particular trilogy focus so heavily on a new character, Corey Cunningham, was a strange choice. Also, I understand the makers wanting to do something different, but having Michael himself in the film so little, that was bound to tick a lot of people off. And I do think that they could have told the same story, but still easily included Michael a bit more than they did. Also, Allison's relationship with Corey did seem a little forced at times, and she didn't come across as very likable to me, at least for parts of the movie. There's so much build up to Corey sort of taking over for Michael, and when he does, it's like David Gordon Green wanted to get it over with as quick as possible. So Corey's killing spree is over very fast. Why rush it? Speaking of which, the scene where Corey steals the shape's mask and actually wrestles him to the ground was a little much. Now the movie sets up that Michael is in a weakened state, but come on, I don't want to see some punk manhandle Michael like that. Also, I feel like some of the stuff set up in Halloween Kills wasn't followed through here. It really does feel like the makers were kind of making things up with this trilogy as they went along, like there wasn't a big master plan behind it. But even still, flaws and all, I have to say, I did enjoy this movie. There's a lot of great stuff here. And I do think, with the passage of time, more people will come to appreciate this film. 
The two-disc Steelbook includes a Blu-ray copy and a 4K copy. A digital download copy is included as well. We've got an image of the shape on the front and Lori on the back. I really love these unique Steelbook editions that Best Buy puts out with a lot of their titles now. And I actually got their Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills edition as well. Just beautiful, right? Picture quality is fantastic here, as it should be with a brand new film on this format. Audio includes a Dolby Atmos track and it sounds fantastic through my soundbar and subwoofer. I especially love the little atmospheric sound effects from the creepy and empty house interiors. It really adds to the experience. For a modern 4K Blu-ray release, there's actually a nice collection of special features here. We have six little featurettes, ranging from four and a half to eight and a half minutes each. Yes, these are studio-friendly little puff pieces, but there's still some great behind-the-scenes information and lots of behind-the-scenes footage. We've also got a gag reel, a cast and crew audio commentary, and deleted and extended scenes. The deleted scenes include some great stuff, some of which never should have been removed. I especially love the extended scene where Cory discovers skeletons and bodies in the sewer. In fact, this entire alternate sequence of Cory escaping Michael after their first encounter was far better than what was in the final cut, in my opinion. And I really don't understand why we didn't get an extended cut for Halloween Ends like we got with Halloween Kills. It is a shame because a few little extra pieces and minutes here and there would have improved the film. The cast and crew audio commentary is fun and there's some great information revealed. It's really evident that not only did these people have a blast making the movie, but they are very proud of it. But I do wish there was more information and explanations on some of the choices made. Why certain scenes were cut or changed, the meaning behind certain sequences and shots, that sort of thing. But that really isn't discussed much here, which is disappointing. A second commentary track with just the director and maybe the editor would have been nice to have. Halloween Ends made a lot of people very angry, and I totally understand why. The marketing for the movie was pretty deceiving, and the film itself went in such a strange direction. But after a second viewing, I enjoyed it much more and appreciated what it was trying to accomplish. And look, I'm a diehard fan of this franchise. People like to crap all over the series, but I love it. Just like I love Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and the Chainsaw Massacre movies. I grew up with these franchises, and I will gladly continue to support them until I'm six feet under. Overall, this is a nice package with excellent picture and sound and some nice special features. So I say check it out and give the movie another chance.